All right, Mark, thank you. So let's take a legal deep dive into this big case. Criminal defense attorney Hector Diaz of Diaz Law joins me once again. Hector, you're actually quite familiar with this particular federal prison, the Metropolitan Detention Center. What's it like? You know, we call it MDC Brooklyn. And um, once you go in, you're very happy to go out yeah. as, a, as a lawyer. Um, you know, very, I've, I've been there in the summer and the winter. Uh, winter is ex extraordinarily horrible. Um, there's really no heat. There are times that the jail shuts down where lawyers can't even have access to their clients. Wow. Um, you know, one of the things that Diddy's lawyers right now are, are up against is trying to get him out because they know that he's not able to focus on the criminal case, not able to participate in his defense. His, he is simply trying to figure out how to survive in those circumstances. Right, yeah. Well, and what are the chances, though, that he could be, you know, moved to that other New Jersey jail? Well, tough, really tough. Um, you know, his lawyers, and again, I actually had the, the pleasure of working with his, his lawyers on another case in New York. Okay. And, and so I'm very familiar with them. They're some of the best lawyers uh, in America, and but they have an uphill battle. They've tried twice. Mm -hmm. They've submitted what are called bail packages asking the judge saying there are other conditions that can ensure the court that he will come back to court that he's not going to be a threat to anybody right. um, the concern the court had here is that he is engaged in some kind of alleged intimidation of other witnesses yeah. had concerns that if he was out he could continue this through third parties um, so I think his lawyers are gonna try and say hey listen let's move him to another facility 50-50 shot based mm. on just the reputation that MDC has. Okay, you just mentioned some of the things that he's accused of, so let's go over some of these charges. Racketeering, sex trafficking, transportation to engage in prostitution. These are really serious. And I think the umbrella covering all those is the very serious prosecutors that are bringing this. I mean, this is out of the Southern District of New York. Some of the best prosecutors in the world are taking these charges up, essentially alleging that Diddy was the head of a criminal enterprise where he was engaging in violence, threats of violence to force women, and in some cases men, to engage in sexual acts for a commercial purpose. Right. So commercial purpose here, that it was done really to promote Diddy, promote his career, and to advance him financially. Yeah, I mean, this indictment, it also alleges that Combs abused, threatened, and coerced women and others around him to fulfill sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. Exactly what you had just said. Some of these actions allegedly, they go back to 2009. Well, and a lot, which, which hurts him, you know, because there's a lot of witnesses, a lot of history, a lot of communications that probably the government has already accessed to support the allegations. But again, a lot of this also came up from lawsuits that were filed by women against P. Diddy. Right. And those lawsuits laid out a lot of this, what's in the indictment mm -hmm. against P. Diddy. And these are people that are going to serve as witnesses when this goes to trial. Okay, so let's just say you are his lawyer. Right. What's, what's his defense? His defense here is that the government has no business going into the private affairs of what happens in, in someone's bedroom. That mm -hmm. these acts were entirely consensual that you know these witnesses really a lot of them wanted to be in p diddy's circle of celebrity they you know what you have here are some of these people that have sued him engaged in nothing more than a money grab mm -hmm. and now uh, you know these people are going to come in and testify their bias their credibility has essentially been undermined mm -hmm. um, because of their ulterior motives and and that really you know it's going to hinge on that what occurred here was nothing more than consensual conduct between adults. Okay, now play prosecutor. These are some of the best prosecutors you were saying. What are they going to argue? I'm going to march every one of these witnesses into courtroom, and I'm going to have them tell the horrific story of what went on when they were in the rooms there. And I'm going to put them in front of the jury, and the jury's going to hear these stories. And I think they're, it's, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be very, very difficult case. I'll tell you, this is a case that will not settle via plea agreement. It's going to go to trial. And it's, you know, we're, we're all, you know, it's not going to be televised, but we're going to hear about it, you know, day by day in the news and the media. I mean, really sensational facts. Okay. I'm sure we'll have you back on again Look as it, it progresses. All right, Hector, thank you so much. Rachel?